Today we're gonna to be reacting to the most popular and viral foods on TikTok. Some of them are great, a few of them is just way too funny, and others just a complete disaster. Let's begin. Today we're putting penis in the crock pot. You know, I can't say much because I actually cooked it for my video as, as well. I wanted to try it to see if I find out if it tastes good. But I'll tell you one thing. I made this pizzo, aka penis, taste so good that my people still remember it today. I made a taco out of it and a media taco out of it. They couldn't believe it because I didn't tell them what it was. But this is what they said. Pretty good. Whatever it is, it doesn't taste very strong. Oh yeah, they like that pizzo, everybody. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. I've tried cooking a steak on a toaster oven, everybody, and it is a complete disaster. Yes, it cooks because it's heat and steak. It will cook it, but at the same time, it will be the worst, worst steak you ever had in your life. As you can see, even her face in the end didn't look like she enjoyed it. It's so bad, I shouldn't even have messed it up with some sauce. That's another way to do it. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> but, hey, at least he's practicing it. He's trying as his best. But that was just extra, extra cute. I always try to motivate the youngsters to get the job done, everybody. Get them young in the kitchen. They will enjoy the process. It's a good thing. He just looks so sad in the end. This is Nona's secret sauce. She wants a video of you trying it for the first time. Noni? Hi, Noni. How are you? Is she on FaceTime? <laughs> no, it's just video. <laughs> what do you think? Look <laughs> up. It's good. It's real good. You know how many times I have to do that? I'm not gonna say who cooked it, but some people you know cooked food and it was like, was it good? Oh my God, it was delicious. You have no idea better than mine. Here's our food styling secret for perfect grill marks. We use a charcoal starter. The marks look great on camera, and the food is still edible. So fake. I hate fake food, everybody. Whenever you're doing food styling, there's so many tricks out there. They use glue instead of milk for cereal. Whenever they're putting syrup on top of the pancake, they use oil. It's just horrible. And here's a funny story for you. When I was doing my book shoot, they wanted to use crazy things. I said, no, if it doesn't look perfect, it's fine, but at least it will be authentic. Everything I put it on my cookbook is 100% real. I'm so sick and tired of people telling me, oh my God, it's still alive. Oh my God, it's bleeding. Oh my God, it's raw. Listen, dude, it's medium rare. That's how you're supposed to eat a steak. Yes, you idiot, a steak, not a chicken. You don't eat chicken medium rare. Oh my God, this is reminding me of when I dry aged chicken. Man, it was so bad, everybody. I highly recommend you not doing that at home. But it is a practice in Japan to eat raw chicken. Medium rare steak is amazing. Medium rare chicken belongs in the trash. That's Leo. That's my Leo. <laughs> that boy is as messy as he gets. But look at this kid. Oh, he is enjoying that thing. And most importantly, he's still sleeping. <laughs> Listen, whenever you're sleeping and you're still eating food and it tastes amazing, you know that pasta was real good. <laughs> That was awesome. I can't get the damn skin on the pork belly to get crispy. I only tried making this three times and each attempt was a different technique. This time I tried baking it to have more control over the temperature. I also tried to use bamboo skewers instead of a knife to poke as many holes as possible in the skin. All right, so next day. This time I also let the pork belly rest overnight in the fridge instead of just going straight into the oven. All right, so I got it to puff up, but it also looks kind of like soft. You know, some of it's crunchy and some of it's soft. So I don't know if 
I messed up, but... Yes, you did messed up. Cooking pork belly can be very, very tricky, but if you follow a certain steps, it's easy. You must cook it in two different stages. If you try to cook everything like the way he did in one stage, it's just not gonna work. First, you wanna cook it and render the fat underneath the skin as much as possible. You do that by setting your oven not too hot. Usually, I like to do it at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I also like to cover with aluminum foil a little bit the skin to protect it. All you're trying to do first is render the fat underneath the pork belly. Once it's cooked to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, then you wanna crispen up the skin. To do that, you take out the pork belly, set your oven on the highest setting on the broiler, stick the pork belly in there without the aluminum foil, and it will crispen up like this. Every single step that he did before that is also necessary if you want the most crispiest skin. Let it dry on your refrigerator overnight. You can even use a little bit of vinegar to put right on top, which turns out incredible. And most importantly, use a little bit of salt if you put it on the refrigerator overnight so that it can draw out even more moisture. This will give you an incredible, crunchy, delicious pork belly. And if you follow these steps, it's gonna be easy. Ah, here you go, salt bay. Oh, oh excuse me, butter bay. <laughs> Zero skill. At least salt bay trying to make it look good. This butter bay guy is just full of butter. Look at his face. His face is just sad, everybody. As soon as it happens, it was like, my life is over. Wow. This guy is quick. That is a nice crispy crust. You see, that's a very important step that he did right there, which he actually finished it in the oven. If you don't finish it in the oven, then it's gonna be raw in the middle and the cheese will also not melt. Make sure to finish it in the oven. And at the same time, chicken cordon bleu is very, very dry. So making a sauce is a must and I think that's what he's doing next. I will eat the crap out of that, man. That looks amazing. But obviously it's chicken. If you don't put a sauce, it's not gonna be as good. He made an incredible sauce. I really like that TikTok. I asked my waiter to remove the fish bones because the chef forgot to. That takes some skills. I've tried that. It is not that simple to do. Don't go try it at home and thinking you're gonna get it the very, very first time. It takes skills, everybody. And you can see that's a sous chef because he had got an apron on, come on. Yeah. That was a nice one. I've tried this. It is not impossible to do, but you just need practice. It's doable. 17 million views. Wow, that's a lot. That's a sturgeon. Wow. Wow. Do you have any idea how much money is in there right now? That's how they harvest the caviar. It is a very interesting process. They use the rest of the part of the fish as well. Now my question to you is, you like caviar? Do you enjoy it? Because a lot of people don't. And depending on what it is that you're putting it on, it's actually good. Those are the most viral foods on TikTok. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.